Good morning, guys. It's your girl, Hazel B. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a My Story Part 2. And this one is uh, dealing with PCOS. Before I get started, I want to say if anyone's uncomfortable with hearing about women's reproduction, periods, menstruation, all that fun stuff, I think you should exit this video. But please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell before you do. Okay, so PCOS is short for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I just want to do a real quick overview of like what it is and some of the causes and um, my experience and my hardships with dealing with this disorder. Firstly, it is a disorder that affects women of the reproduction age and it can occur shortly after a girl starts puberty, first and foremost. Um, the actual cause of this disorder is unknown, which I do find very interesting. But the websites that I was looking at, they did list what could be some of the causes. And one of them is um, excess insulin in your body and insulin resistance. Um, Low-grade inflammation, which is the white blood cells, does not um, produce enough substance to fight various infections it could be hereditary and it could be an excess of anadrin which is a male hormone which let's be real ladies some of us have probably a little bit more uh male hormones than any woman would like to admit that she has um so that could be the cause of PCOS, or it can also be a result of dealing with PCOS. Um, there's no cure for this disorder. You can only treat it and manage it. And some of those are through medications, which is uh, like birth control or progesterone treatments. And the other one would be, you know, lifestyle changes, eating healthier, being active, um, staying low on carbohydrates and um you know <laughs> so what does PCOS cause the number one cause uh, the number one complication of PCOS is infertility infertility is the number one thing that women who deal with this disorder encounter myself included um, another thing would be absent menstruation cycles, prolonged menstruation cycles, um, extremely light, which, I mean, who can really complain about that? Am I right, ladies? Um, spotting in between periods, uh, just period irregularly, irregular, having very messed up regular uh period cycles okay i'm stumbling all over my words because it's for me it's a touchy subject especially dealing with the infertility part and another thing that it, it causes is acne and the other thing would be excess hair and where i suffer with my excess hair would be in the face um very embarrassing but it's just a complication from the disorder. Uh, get suffer with hair, you know. Here, I try to keep it shaved as best as possible, and you know, when you can't, you still have to walk out the house and hold your head up high, cause I am all woman. You know, women, ladies, don't be embarrassed about that. It it happens. It's I know embarrassing. It's it's just embarrassing, but I mean, you have to do what you have to do, and I deal with it. Um, so my life dealing with PCOS has been hard, 
difficult, stressful, and depressing. And it's been all of that because I've always wanted children. I do have an amazing daughter who will be six in about a month and a half. I cannot believe she's going to be six. And she is my miracle baby in more ways than one. But the one way she is my miracle baby because I was actually able to get pregnant. With the help of, um, I was on, I think, um, progesterone pills like a year or so prior to me getting pregnant with her. I took those regularly and it did help with re regulating my um, menstrual cycles. But it still took about a year and a half to two years for me to get pregnant with her. And I got pregnant with her shortly after I came to the conclusion that I would never become a mom. I would never get pregnant. Um, but then, you know, <laughs> find out I was pregnant with her. Which I'm still thinking about maybe doing a story time on that. Because it is. It's kind of a funny story. Um, so. And then. Like I mentioned in my first video. With you know. Getting back out into the dating world. And maybe finding someone who. May want to have a child. Or more children. And that has to be. A topic of letting them know. That I have fertility issues. So, you know, nobody's time is wasted. Um, I also, you know, it's not impossible, obviously. But it is very, very difficult. I am 30 now. And it could not be 100% true. But in my eyes and for dealing with this for so long, um, I just feel that now that I am 30, it, would, it, has, begun, it has become probably even more difficult for me to become pregnant but i did set out a year ago to you know till i turned 31 to you know really try to get pregnant and we'll see what happened I, I don't really think that i would try after i turn 31 maybe 31 and a half i don't know but uh it is it is um manageable if you are fortunate to have, you know, some ends, some funds, some coins, there's always fertility treatments. Like I said, there's medications, a few of them that I will probably be mentioning to my OBGYN and primary doctor the next time I see them. Um, the lifestyle changes. Oh, yeah. An uh, interesting fact about PCOS. You don't have to be fat or obese to develop PCOS. You can develop PCOS and that disorder can actually cause you to gain weight. And this was one of the symptoms I had um, early in my teenage years. I mean, I've always been, you know, a little chunky or whatever, but I was very a very active child, um, picky eater. You can only eat what you have access to growing up, and my mom did the best as to having healthier options um, for me growing up. And I just noticed shortly after I hit puberty, that's when the weight really started you know, coming on. And I was still very active for the most part. I loved jumping rope, like jumping rope and double dutch that and line dancing. That was my thing. I love doing it and dancing. I could dance for hours without, you know, getting tired. So I was very active, even though I was overweight. So you know, it kills me that, you know, people being judgmental, which I also talked about this in my first video, can probably look at an overweight, especially for a, a woman, can look at an overweight woman and possibly just sit there and just be like, mm, you're fat because you probably sit on your butt 24-7, you don't do nothing, and all you do is eat. Well, I'm letting you know 
that that's not always the case. I'm one of those cases that that was not the reason why I became overweight. It's not. Dealing with the PCOS was the main factor in me becoming overweight. And then dealing with the depression was another factor um, that also led to, you know, some weight gain. But I'm here. I'm dealing with it. I still, you know, wake up with, you know, a smile on my face, even though, like I said, it's very difficult to, you know, realize. What makes it so difficult, like I mentioned, me always wanting to be a mom. I always wanted to be a mom and always wanted more than one child, at least two. So to realize that you have something that could potentially keep your dream from happening, it is. I find myself crying at times, even to this day. Uh, and then it, it makes it even harder when you have your child and she wants a little sister or a little brother. And she talks about that a lot. Mommy, I want a little sister. Mommy, I want a baby sister. And it's just like, you know, because you're not going to sit up here and tell her, well, yeah, that may not be possible. I mean, she's only five. She has no clue why she may never have a, have a sibling. And it breaks my heart guys it it really breaks my heart but i just wanted to do this video so like i said to give you a quick overview of what pcos is what it causes if you feel like you dealing with any of those i suggest you see your primary um doctor or obgyn and just you know let them know what you may be dealing with whether it be the months at a time with no period or prolonged periods or they um spotting in between um periods that's the other thing that really gets up under my skin about dealing with this at one period of time for a very long time i would menstruate for like 22 to 23 days out of a month and the most days in a month are what 31 days so basically a whole month at a time I would be going through that with maybe a week in between, probably the most two weeks in between. But then I would have spotting during those times. So it was almost like I was having some form of flowage every day of the month. And it lasted for, I don't know how long. It, and, you know, that's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. That really affects your um, complete blood count because it, it affected mine. My levels are pretty low um, from going so long, so, so long with almost bleeding every day for months at a time. And the longest I think I've ever, like, nonstop had a period was, like, three months and that happened a few times. It makes life miserable. Ladies, we already know how miserable periods are. But to deal with this and to have the issue of it being an access. Oh, oh like that's the only thing you can say because there's nothing you can do about it is you can't snap your fingers and you know and it magically stops you can do nothing but deal with it until it decides it wants to stop and that has to probably be the most stressful part for me and then by also being in irregular you don't know exactly when it's going to start so you always have to be prepared at all times that it kind of makes life not enjoyable for me because you you know you want to dress cute you want to have your little cute outfits on you know your pretty underwear but it's like uh should i dare or you know you have to make sure you have on a liner or a pad 
just in case. Because a lot of times, for me, I don't know. I, I'm guessing a lot of women do too. Sometimes you just don't know until you go to the bathroom. And it'd be that nice little surprise waiting there for you. So it makes life kind of unenjoyable. Um, But, hey, I don't want to drag this video out. So it's tolerable. There's treatments. There's things you can do to, you know, to try to help with managing with the um, disorder. It's not curable or anything, but it's manageable. There are treatment options. Ladies, anybody who's watching or come across this video, you're dealing with something like this and you really want to become a mom, don't give up hope. It's not impossible. It's very, very difficult. I give you that, but it's not impossible. I am your living, breathing proof that is not impossible. Like I said, I have a daughter who will be six. I did deal with gestational diabetes when I was pregnant, which is a cause from the PCOS and getting pregnant. Um, but she was on time. She wasn't premature. Thankfully, I did not have a miscarriage, which are also complications from prob possibly getting pregnant um, on PLC P with PCOS. But it's, you can do it, ladies. And like I said, I will have websites for information about PCOS in the description box. So give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below any ideas. I will have some more videos being uploaded very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos when I post. Until the next time, peace.